the New Testament scriptures taken from uh, 1 Timothy uh, verses uh, 12 through 17 and it goes uh, I thank you Christ Lord, Jesus our Lord who has given me strength that he's considered me faithful appointing me to his service even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man I was shown mercy because I was acted in ignorance and unbelief the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that reason I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive internal, eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. So I'm usually not uh, too nervous about public speaking, but I got a little, got some uh, butterflies today. But uh, Good morning. It's a great honor to be able to deliver this sermon to you on Lady Sunday. I hope I can bring some insights to you on your journey with the Lord Jesus Christ through a few reflections on my own experiences. Rather than spend time on the details of my psychiatric history and my diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia, let me summarize it through a poem I wrote in 2006. Hi, I'm God was the joke I made after Killer Dartmouth toke of some primo Ivy League smoke, which apparently caused me to croak because in special hospital I awoke with Rumi Gabriel, the main bloke, who did my delusions to angelically stroke while the doctor claimed my brain broke the moment divine gag I spoke, testifying I was only big quack which clinicians diagnosed a psychotic attack, preventing me from getting sanity back until I came to Teaneck Hackensack to pursue resident therapy program track and deal with my evident lack of reason among psychiatric patient pack who never gave me any slack. Under interrogation, the story didn't crack. So, in the summer of 1975 at Dartmouth College, I figured out I was God. This revelation began a mental health quest for a return to sanity and recovery that continues to this day 48, day, 48 years later. To be honest, I didn't really believe myself. I thought my claim was an absurd and hilarious joke because I reasoned in my drug-addled mind how could God be five foot eight in such a vast universe? Unfortunately, the authorities didn't have my sense of humor and refused to see my assertions as hilarious. They did, however, think me hysterical. As a consequence, I was removed from the Ivy League and spent the next 13 weeks in a mental hospital in New York City before coming to Hackensack where I was in a private psychiatric program for five years. Upon graduation from the program, I got my own apartment and returned to college at Fairleigh Dickinson University, where I completed my bachelor's degree in 1985. Paul speaks in our New Testament lesson today almost proudly of his primacy as a sinner for his persecution of believers before his conversion on the road to Damascus. As time and my illness unfolded, I became increasingly convinced of my position as a creator, that until that is, the moment when I had an inner vision of the entire earth being incinerated in a thermonuclear holocaust. This moment, which I called the death of Dale, which was the death of my ego, that had the delusions was the event that changed my life. I was shocked into realizing the dangerous absurdity of my delusions, which died with the planet on that calm autumn morn in 1984. 
My life changed immediately and immeasurably as I began to face the consequences of my folly and truly began my recovery after a decade of denial of my illness. With the end of the psychotic beliefs upon which I had built my reality, I had to face myself in what I felt was the cosmic immensity of the sin of pride I had come to embody by my false beliefs. Paul had nothing on me. I had committed the ultimate blasphemy of making myself the equal of God. This was the sin of the, of the devil and the snake and Satan. Although I had entered innocently into the realm of delusion, now that it was over, I had to confront the fact of my own feelings on cosmic guilt before the judgment of the Lord Father God. Before I talk about salvation, I should clarify what the word means to me. What is salvation? The story of Adam and Eve and their expulsion from Eden is not about nudity or talking snake. The real point is that because of their ingestion of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, they, they, they were set, condemned to the curse of separation from the presence of God. Jesus Christ came into life to end that curse. Through Christ, we are reunited with the Father. In my psychosis, I deluded myself that I had found the Godhead. As I recovered, I began to see increasingly the glory of the Lord and my own smallness and my need for humility. Salvation for me was an awareness of the kingdom within, where I was allowed to experience the presence of God, not in the false bliss of drug delusions, but, in the, but rather in the joyfulness of the daily routine through which he guides me. The union is, this union is forever available to you, me, and every individual through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. This connection is now how I've come to understand salvation. The God of the Old Testament was, a, was one of righteous judgment, but Jesus in the New Testament is the living embodiment of the purely divine compassion and love of the creator of the universe. As I moved away from my psychotic perceptions, I entered into a deep self-judgment where I could find no, one, no human able to forgive me for what I felt was my unpardonable sin of pridefulness. I searched everywhere to find relief for my metaphysical guilt, but instead only wandered through an endless desert of unforgiveness. Jesus taught that every person is blessed. He guaranteed to get forgiveness of all humans through the salvation of the holy blood shed on the cross, which led to the resurrection and ensures eternal grace through the sacrifice of the physical body. Looking for relief for myself, I returned to his church in 2004. After a few months of attendance, I began to have weekly meetings with Pastor Dennis Wilcox, ostensibly to discuss my poetry, which is, my call, which is one of my callings, but these sessions inevitably turned to a theological discussion about the salvation guaranteed by the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Slowly, I began to see the glory, the beauty, and the wonder of the covenant of forgiveness brought about by the death of our Lord on the cross. The more I talked about the immensity of my sin, the more I gained insight from Pastor Wilcox into the true miracle of the gift of grace created by the blood of Christ. I understood that judgment will not come from without because the kingdom of heaven is within. The more we are guided by the Holy Spirit, the greater the blessing the judgment of God will be. Let me end by praising the joy and, and the, the sacrifice that Jesus brought by its universal nature. If I, Dale Edward Walsh, who tested the limits of blasphemy, can be forgiven my sons of pridefulness, then general anointing is a reality for all humans. Often, the judgment we pass on ourselves is infinitely more severe than any punishment the heavenly loving Father of Jesus Christ would ever conceive of using. The way we often judge ourselves is much harder than that of God. It is essential to always remember that Jesus came to, the, to be 
the antidote to the concept of sin defined by the curse and the fall from Eden. We are all children of the Lord, eternally blessed by the blood of Christ. Every person ultimately co-creates with the divinity of the, Every person ultimately co-creates with the divinity their own heaven or hell, both on earth and beyond. Let us celebrate the bliss that the resurrection of Jesus promises and see the compassion of the Father in our daily lives rather than, the blame, rather than blame ourselves by living in the fear and doubt of the guilt of sin that the perfection of our Lord Jesus Christ washes away. Let us pray. Holy Father God in heaven, thank you for the salvation guaranteed by the sacrifice of your, Lord, of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, upon the cross. Help us to appreciate the immensity of the gift of your grace and the joy of the promise of eternal life in his kingdom. Thank you for the pain of his sacrifice that saves us from the agony of the inferno of hell. Please bless us in our striving and let the miracle of his life Grow the seed of faith within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.